Hey there, in this screencast, we're going to quickly style all of the HTML elements that we have in this page. So this is what our page looks like so far uh, in a browser. And if I switch to brackets, I've got the code open here. So I'm just going to quickly do a little bit of extra stuff that I neglected to do with the HTML. Oh, this is, shouldn't be here. So basically, I just wanted to make these paragraphs here. Um, I wanted to make them uh, italics. So we do that with the emphasis tag, which is just plain old EM. And I'll just move that over. By the way, you can remove the... Um, automatic con uh, closing of tags. It's in your um, debug. Those of you who took my, are taking my course, or the course, you'll see that being talked about in the discussions. So just EM, and again, when you're coding this stuff yourself, uh, try to avoid, sorry, that should be um, slash EM there. Try to avoid copying and pasting until you're 100% comfortable with your syntax of your code. I find that's a lot of help. You can see I'm not 100% comfortable with my, the syntax of my code, so I shouldn't be copying and pasting either. So let's quickly see what we have here. If I just file save, control S for uh, Windows, I believe it's command S. For uh, Mac, and I'll refresh this as well. F5 refreshes. So now down at the bottom, those should be italics. Now you'll see that I had just a strong tag around these ones. These are still paragraphs, so it's more correct to actually throw your paragraph tags around these as, these ones as well. So I'm just going to quickly do that, and uh, there's a reason for that because I'm going to be adding a style to the P tags. Any text that's not within a P tag won't be affected by the style that we add to the P tag. And if that doesn't make any sense at this point, don't worry about it. We'll, uh, you'll see all of that later. So I'm just going to quickly make these all paragraphs as well. And there as well. And there as well. And this actually works quite nicely for adding the tags at the same time as we're adding content, but not so well if we've already added the content and we're adding the tags afterwards. So that's why some of you were probably frustrated with this automatic functionality. Useful when you are uh, creating code from scratch, but if you already have a bunch of t text that you're adding code to, which is what we were doing with assi this assignment, it's not so useful. Um, now, um, one other thing I promised to mention in the discussion was um, indents. So a good place to see this, notice that we have an unordered list and then we have a bunch of list items within that unordered list. So a lot of folks with their code would indent this whole section. So you can go to edit, and then indent and notice that it's control plus um, the right hand square bracket. I'll go the long way, but in real life I would always just use that one. Now, of course, in Mac it'll be whatever is equal to a control key. I get it mixed up if it's the option key or the uh, command key. I always have to try it out. And again, you can edit, uh, indent that as well. So basically, anytime there's elements within another element, this one should be unindented. And one more time. Again, this is why you would want to use the shortcut key. There it is. Unindent. Or you could just use backspace with space if it's just one line. But if you want to indent multiple lines, that shortcut is handy. I'm just going to that on its own line. 
confuse anybody? Okay, so we've added our emphasis. We've um, added the paragraphs around our uh, bold pieces of text there. That is strong. And uh, that's all we need to do uh, that's left over from last week. Now, the next thing we want to do is add some structural HTML5 code. So first of all, I'm going to throw something called a div, which is the, a division, around everything inside of the body. So basically, it will be a block that we can grab a hold of and manipulate however we like, as long as we have basically that set aside as, you can think of it as uh, similar to a section or something like that, a division. So I'm just gonna put a div in here. And I'm gonna put in an ID. So the difference between ID and we'll see classes later on, you can only have one ID of the same name on a page, or you should, I should say. So div, div ID, and I'm gonna call this ID page or some such thing. You'll frequently see it called container. And then I'm gonna close that div right below, right above the closing body tag. So that's the first structural piece. Now, if I save and refresh this and uh, take a look at it, you'll see that there's nothing different yet. So I'm not gonna bother saving and refreshing until we actually see a difference. Now, I'm also gonna throw this H1 here in something inside something called a header. So that's an actual HTML5 tag. And inside of that header, header I'm gonna throw in something called a nav. That's also an HTML5 tag. Inside of that nav, I'm just gonna hit tab to indent. I'm gonna put a list. So this is gonna be an unordered list that has all of the common links that you would have in a navigation bar. And uh, tab and li. This one will be uh, about us. I'll say about me because it's uh, one lady so far. I'm just hitting end on my keyboard. And then I'm going to do this again. This one will be resume. So this will be the actual page we're at. And we'll also say contact. So we could have a contact form there or simply an email and a phone number or something like that. And then I'm going to have all of my social media links as well. Oh, and one more. I'll put it before social media. Shop. Anytime you have a website, you want to sell something so you can pay for your website, right? And because we exist within the capitalist society. Now, these aren't links yet. I'm going to make them uh, basically uh, dummy links. So they'll still behave within the layout as a link. So that when I style a link, um, we'll actually be able to see the benefits of that style. Um, and it kind of adds a couple of behaviors that we'll see. So what I'm going to do is just throw an anchor tag, which is our link. And I'm just going to address a question that I had in the discussion. So this is the plain old anchor tag. That makes it a link. An anchor tag doesn't do much without an attribute. And this is an attribute. Basically, this is the plain tag. This is the attribute. So everything within that tag, aside from the tag name, is an attribute. And they're always uh, expressed in attribute name and value pairs, which you'll see is quite a ubiquitous in coding that arrangement. And for these, I'm just gonna throw in a hash mark. So that means uh, self. So it basically means uh, a place in this document. You can have a name of a place in this document, or if you just have this plain hash mark, it'll just be the document itself. So nothing will happen, but this thing will still behave as a link. And if you click on it, it'll become a visited link. So I'm just going to quickly copy and paste that through the other four and then 
copy and paste the close A as well. Um, control C, Control V, by the way, or the Windows counterpart. <clears throat> you can let me know what the heck that is in discussion if you like. I do have a Mac, but it requires me adding it to my network so I don't have to have multiple keyboards and stuff. All right, so now those will dis display as links. So that's why I did all that. So we have um, a header inside of a page. Inside of the header, we have a nav inside of the nav. And by the way, this is a very standard way of setting up your navigation links. It's always in an unordered list with link items. Very, very common. And it may seem a little funny when you first look at it, but you'll see how we can make it better. Now we're going to throw all of this stuff in, in, into a section. So this is another HTML5 element. And I'm going to give this a class. So, so class is similar to ID, but with class you can have multiple items of the same class in a document. Remember what I said about ID, you shouldn't have multiple items with the same ID. Of course the system will allow it and you, you may not see um, any uh, negative uh, things happen with that until you actually try to code it a bit. This class, I'm going to make it uh, main. So I could have several sections with different classes and I could basically style them separately. Or I could have several sections with the same class and style that them all to be the same. And I'm just going to put that close tag right at the end uh, right before the, um, the end of the page. So that's the page. Now, this div, it, you can't really tell what it's uh, closing, this division. And there's talk about these things being deprecated, but they're not yet, and I don't think they ever will be. Um, but there's something that happens when you have multiple divs within divs. You get something called divitis. It's very difficult to see which div this tag is closing. So a very common practice is to comment, and I think this is our first time looking at comments, uh, this div to let us know what it's for. And this is an HTML comment. It's bracket, which is uh, shift comma, exclamation mark, dash dash, and now this is a way we actually uh, express what it's closing. So this is closing page. So I'm just going to go like this. Now that doesn't do anything. It's, it's just a shorthand way of saying this div is closing the starting div page. All right, so now we've got all of our structure for now taken care of, I believe. And again, we won't see much of a benefit of this yet. But let's just quickly choose File Save. And then I'll refresh. And again, nothing has changed except we now have a nav bar. So that's adding um, additional HTML5 structural codes to an HTML document. Uh, in the next video, this one's still long enough, it's already 15 minutes, but in the next video, um, I'll show you how we can actually change the appearance of these things using CSS. Thanks so much for watching.